Hello, and welcome to this uh, third introductory film about equilibrium. Um, it's the second one that kind of looks at the type of graphs that we see when we're looking at equilibrium processes. This one deals with concentration time graphs, and rather like the last film, it's really just an introduction. It's just to get you thinking about the key features of these graphs. Okay, so here is a concentration time graph. Again, they're fairly easy to spot, like the rate time graphs, but this time instead of rate on the y-axis, they've got concentration. So concentration time, that's why they're called concentration time graphs. Okay, and this shows um, we've got a reversible reaction system here, okay, with COCl2 turning into Cl2 and CO reversibly. Okay, and what this graph does is it plots the concentrations of the three species that are in the equation there. Okay, now how do we um, see when the system is at equilibrium on one of these graphs? Well, if you cast your mind back to what the um, the characteristics of a system at equilibrium are, well, the rates are the same. The rates of the forward and backward reactions are the same, and the concentrations need not be the same, but they must be constant. Okay, so in other words, we're looking for these areas where the lines are flat. Okay, so here are my three different substances and each one of their concentrations is remaining constant. So in this region here from 0 to 4 seconds the system must be at equilibrium. Okay, at 4 seconds there must be some change made because the system is responding to that change. It's not at equilibrium here. Okay, so in this region here between 4 and 8 seconds the concentrations are changing, so the system must not be at equilibrium. Okay, we must be um, doing something that involves the rates of the forward and backward reactions being different. Okay, we get back to flat lines in this region between eight and ten seconds. So once again, we've got an equilibrium state. Okay, so forward and backward reactions going at the same rate, and then suddenly some change is made again because the concentrations are changing and then we get back to equilibrium after 12 seconds and then again after 14 seconds a change is made how do we know that we're not at equilibrium here because the concentrations are changing and then they get back to constant amounts or flat lines and we're back at equilibrium so we've got um, another two equilibrium sections there on that graph okay so that's what the graphs look like I'm just going to have a quick look before we um, come back to that graph and and have a think about how we can actually change the concentration of substances in a reaction system. Now, this might seem obvious, um, but if, in case it doesn't, okay, um, there's a number of different things we can do, and uh, this kind of touches on this idea that the concentration is very similar to pressure. Okay, so we can look at solutions and we can look at gases in terms of concentration. Okay, now in a solution you can change the concentration of the substances in the solution either by adding them or dissolving more in the water or whatever solvent you've got or you could evaporate some solvent that will change the concentration of solids. So you could add some more solvent. Okay, so there's various ways of changing the concentration of solutions. With gases, so if we equate pressure and concentration, so if we say that they're roughly similar things, you can change the concentration of gases by injecting more gas into a container, okay, so that will increase its concentration, or you could maybe condense one of the gases in a container, because that will turn it into a liquid, and then there won't be the same concentration of that gas in the container anymore if you remove it, okay. So gases can be changed um, in much the same way as solutes in solutions, we just add some of them or, or take some of them away, okay? But we can also change the concentration of a gas by fiddling with the size of its container, okay? So if we make, uh, if, if for example, we have a syringe that has some gases um, inside it, okay? If we increase the size of that syringe, then at that precise moment, there'll be the number of moles of gas that we had in there before, but in a bigger volume. So their concentrations will all drop. Okay, if we push the plunger down, 
and we end up with a smaller volume in here, then at that precise moment that we did that, and bear in mind the system could respond and return to equilibrium, but I'm just talking about at that precise moment that the change is made. Okay, we push the plunge down, we've got a smaller volume in this container, so same number of moles of gas, but in a smaller volume, that means an increase in concentration. Okay, so various ways we can change concentrations of substances in an equilibrium system. Just want to go back to that graph and see what might have caused these concentration changes at the times the changes were made. Okay, so note that, okay, that change was made here at four seconds and another change was made here at 10 seconds, another change made here at 14 seconds. So let's have a think about what might have caused those changes. Well, at this point here, there is some kind of response from the system, but at the precise moment that change was made, none of the concentrations immediately changed. Okay, They start to change after that moment, but at the precise moment, no change was made to the concentration. So we didn't do any of those things that we were just talking about on the previous slide. At 10 seconds, however, we can see there's a sudden drop in carbon monoxide concentration. Okay, So at that precise moment again, remember we we're talking about at the precise moment this change was made. Okay, Because you can see that carbon, carbon monoxide actually starts to rise again after that. But at that precise moment, that drops. But these two, the chlorine and the COCl2, they stay exactly where they are. So perhaps some CO was removed from the system there. Okay, but Maybe we managed to condense some more or we had some other way of removing it from the system. Okay, Now let's look at this change at 14 seconds. Now notice what's happened here. All the concentrations have suddenly dropped. Okay, Now perhaps we just removed some of the reaction mixture from the vessel. Okay, Or maybe something else happened. Now if we look here carefully at what's gone on, the chlorine concentration dropped from 0.12 to 0.08. The uh, carbon monoxide concentration from 0.06 to 0.04 and the COCl2 concentration from 0.03 roughly to 0.02. So they've all dropped to two-thirds of their original value. Okay. The concentrations all fell by that amount, then perhaps, or by that factor, I should say, if they all fell by that factor, then perhaps the volume of the container was increased, right, to three halves of its original value. Okay, because then the volume will go from, well, let's say it was about here, we've gone up to about there. Okay, the volume is now three halves bigger. So all the concentrations will drop by two-thirds, okay, because there's the same number of moles of gas, but in a bigger volume, okay. Notice there is a response to that change. That's the equilibrium system for obeying Le Chatelier's principle, but we'll look at that in more detail um, in the subsequent films, where we're actually looking closely at certain factors that change an equilibrium system. Okay, but for now, just notice some of the important features of this graph. Okay, that concentration time graphs show you the concentrations of the reactants and products as time goes by, and that there are flat, set, flat sections of the graph that show you that the system is at equilibrium. Okay, not necessarily the concentrations being the same. Okay, remember on the rate time graph, we had the rates being the same. On a concentration time graph, the concentrations don't have to be the same but they do have to be constant. Okay, so that's all the introductory films um, dealt with for equilibrium. Um, it'd be good if you go on now to some of the more, um, well, some of the practical films that demonstrate the uh, specific changes in equilibrium systems that we can make and how systems will respond according to Le Chatelier's principle.